Hi, my name is Justin Simpson, and this is a Game Movie Dude video essay. If I told you the following plot, a man falls in love with two men, one older and the other younger, only to discover that both of them are both father and son, you'd probably think I'm describing the plot of a gay porno film. I'm not. So today we're going to take a look at a film that took this plot idea and turned it into a narrative film romantic comedy. This is The Men Next Door. Our movie starts with our main character, Doug, played by Eric Dean, on his 40th birthday, who unfortunately is all alone. What follows is a series of phone calls to various friends and family and their excuses as to why they can't join him. Are you and James on your way? Don't be mad. Mad? Why? We can't make it tonight. Evelyn? I know, it's Jaden. Josh's mother gave him a cupcake after a play date this afternoon. Sugar, at that hour, can you believe it? Well. Wow, her child must be really frightening for her to be stuck in a kitchen corner and not be able to move. Or they simply couldn't pay a child actor. Other friends who can't make it include Mark Cirillo because he's having sex with gay porn star Trevor Knight. This is the second movie I've reviewed with Mark Cirillo in it, and it's also the second movie I've had to crop out because his penis was in the shot. Just a trivial fact. Then there's Doug's fellow employees who can't make it as well, so it seems he is all on his own until one of the most embarrassing roles I've ever seen for a woman arrives at his doorstep. Uh, I'm Bambi. With an eye. Great. I was told there was going to be a party. It was canceled on account of patheticness. We could still... It is soon revealed that the stripper was actually a prank gift from Doug's twin brother who lives miles away. We get a conversation of exposition to point out that Doug's currently seeing a man next door who is 10 years older than him, but is not considering it a serious relationship. And also, if you couldn't figure it out already, they're twins. Okay, I know there is such a thing as twins who look completely different, but couldn't they just cast Eric Dean in both roles as twins, only shot in different locations? Tom Hardy can play twins very well with great acting skills. Why can't... I'll stop right there. So when Doug kicks out the stripper, a cute guy arrives at the same time. Come in. Let's get this over with. I'm paid by the hour. Right. <laughs> nice. You should wax. What? Never mind. Amuse me. Keep going. Turn this day around. Let me take this moment to explain why this scene doesn't work for me. I know this scene is supposed to be comedic because one character thinks one thing is happening while the other has other intentions, but if Doug thinks this guy is there to do something he doesn't really want to happen, then why would he actually go through with it? In reality, he would have asked him to leave. But again, if that happened, we wouldn't have a movie. So after the misunderstanding, both guys seem to have some attraction to each other, and Doug ends up having birthday sex with the beautiful boy next door, whose name is Colton, played by the very sexy Benjamin Lutz. Mm. You live next door? Mm, yes, that I do. Just renting, but I like it. So what brings you to the neighborhood? Way to make it seem more likely for them to hook up without any precautions, movie. Smooth. The next day, the older guy Doug has been seen pays a visit for his belated birthday present. His name is Jacob, played by Michael Nicklin. What follows is an entire conversation of exposition about how they met just in case an audience is listening to them, and enjoy an afternoon of sex. I'm living in the wrong place if you get laid this much in this neighborhood. Since Jacob doesn't live in the same neighborhood as Doug, more exposition points out that he's staying with one of his sons until he can find a place to live. It isn't long until Colton meets up with Doug again and invites him over to his place for dinner. Just when you thought things would go smoothly, hijinks ensue when it is revealed that Colton's father is actually Jacob. Doug, this is Jacob, my father. Your father. Your father? My father. So now we've reached the point in the film where the idea of a man dating both a father and a son will either make people really uncomfortable or it'll seem just as a regular romantic comedy love triangle plot. 
I'm curious to find out if this kind of plot can be played out as just a straight narrative as opposed to a pornographic concept. So after some brotherly advice that doesn't really help the plot, let alone Doug, he decides to keep his secret amongst Jacob and continues to see Colton, who has no idea. And Jacob, who does. I'm kind of shocked at the idea that Jacob has no problem whatsoever of the guy he's sleeping with is also seeing his son. Colton drops in unexpectedly to Doug's place when he can't find his father. Thankfully, the movie takes this opportunity to expose the big secret. I get that. Dad? Good morning. Doug? What's going on? I think we found a way to tell him. Hmm. Yes, that is incredibly awkward. So far, this movie plays out more like a sitcom than it does a film, so let's see how much further this concept will go. So all three of them have the discussion of where to take their relationships with each other. Since both Colton and Jacob have feelings for Doug, it's up to him to decide what happens next. If you weren't, would it be such a problem? No, but we are what we are. Yeah, which means that we have to be really careful of each other's feelings, right? Right. But then Doug says this. So why don't we keep dating and see where things lead? Really? Someone's feelings are bound to be hurt if you continue to date both a father and the son knowingly at the same time. Jealousy, favoritism, it's inevitable. We later get a montage of Doug dating Colton and Jacob back and forth. And of course, the big joke is that both of their date choices are extremely similar. On one date, however, Doug and Jacob are supposed to go to Las Vegas for a weekend, but Jacob surprises Doug to a trip to a private cabin in the woods that he owns. Given one recent movie I recently reviewed, hopefully there will be no evil Jesse Ware lookalikes in this cabin. After all, this isn't a made-for-TV movie where a bunch of queers get lost in the woods and have to eat each other's asses in order to survive. <sighs> so Doug and Jacob think they have the place all to themselves until Colton arrives unexpectedly. What follows, of course, is very awkward, very predictable, hijinks of everybody seeing each other naked because... gay movie. This, of course, is the big pivotal moment in the movie where the big problem has to be settled somehow. And so far, this movie has proved that this concept can be played off as the, a romant as the plot of a romantic comedy. But the problem is this, the comedy is just not funny enough. The film then takes a big turn for the good in what I will say is the most well-acted and well-written part of the film. So that's it. Both just gone from my life? I guess so. You couldn't make a decision, Doug. We had to. Okay, I must say, this is the part of the film that not only is the most engaging, but it's also the most realistic. This is where the film starts to grab me. This is where it starts to get interesting. It's just a shame that the comedy all beforehand couldn't be as good as this moment. Both Jacob and Colton have one last scene of their own with Doug, basically explaining what they feel for Doug, despite deciding it's best to go their own ways. Jacob, however, says that Doug should be with Colton instead because he is his son, after all, and wants what's best for him. Again, well-written, plausible, and a great character arc. Now, here's the deal. This would be the part of the review where I... Tell you the end of this movie, but I'm not going to spoil it because I feel at this point, if um, you're still watching, you're going to want to know what whether this is this movie is worth it or not. So I think it's appropriate for me to tell you my final thoughts on this movie right now. The Men Next Door is not a perfect film by all means. In fact, I don't even feel this movie needed to be feature length. It would work just fine as a short film. The film just so happens to be feature length because the movie is filled and filled and filled with exposition and talking scenes with Doug's friends. This movie is directed after all by the same guy who directed Out to Kill. If you want to know why I didn't show you any of the scenes where Doug has chats with his friends, it's because they don't add anything to the plot. I just told you what happens with our three main characters only and the story made perfect sense. 
Never explain what's going on in your movie. Show the audience. Movies are about action, not dialogue. So now that we got the whole technical aspects of this film out of the way, and my final thoughts on that, how about the whole love triangle plot of this film? To me, the plot is different than anything I've seen in a regular narrative movie. Yes, it does sound like the plot of a gay porno, but it surprisingly has potential as the plot of a comedy as well. The Men Next Door just fails in making the comedic moments seem funny as opposed to just flat out awkward, which is how most of these scenes play out. In my opinion, because the idea of a gay man being in a relationship with both a dad and his son seems so far-fetched, it makes me as an audience member find it hard to see myself in that situation, therefore less likely for me to find what's happening on screen to be funny. Bottom line, The Man Next Door is not for everybody. If you think this movie looks too much of a niche film or too gay or you can't get into the plot somehow, then this movie is definitely not for you. I would say skip it. However, um, if you think the actors look really sexy or you just want kind of a Netflix and chill kind of night, or I would say rent this online. It's worth a rental online. Currently, as of this taping, it's not, on, it's not available on Netflix, but um, find it where you can if interested. As for me, I'm kind of stuck between the two and I can't make up my mind.